I'm Ron Struss. And I'm Ray Pagotti. We are with the Pesticide Management Unit of the Minnesota Department of Agriculture and are here to discuss application setback requirements found on labels of atrazine products. Atrazine is a widely used corn herbicide and one that the Minnesota Department of Agriculture finds at concentrations of concern in surface water through its routine water monitoring. To protect water resources, the department wants to make sure that those who apply atrazine products are aware of and follow the required application setbacks from water found on atrazine labels. These required application setback distances are found in the environmental hazard section of atrazine product labels and are highlighted on this poster that is available from the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. For wells and sinkholes, the application setback distance is 50 feet. For streams and rivers, the distance is 66 feet. And for lakes and reservoirs, it is 200 feet. In some cases, a 66 foot application setback may also be required from surface tile inlets. You need to read and follow your product label. Atrazine is not to be applied in these setback areas to protect water quality. We have come to this location to demonstrate what an atrazine application setback would look like for a field adjacent to a stream. This stream is also a county ditch. The Minnesota Department of Agriculture has determined that drainage ditches that have flowing water throughout the year or are marked as an intermittent or perennial stream on a USGS topographical map are considered to be streams in regards to the compliance with the atrazine label. This drainage ditch meets both of those criteria. Atrazine product labels include this language. This product may not be applied airily or by ground within 66 feet of the points where field surface water enters perennial or intermittent streams and rivers. Note the language used. Within 66 feet of the points where field surface water enters indicates a setback is not needed along the entire length of a stream, river, or drainage ditch, but only at those specific locations where field runoff enters. Our first step is to determine the point where runoff from this field enters the stream. The culvert behind us is a good place to start. We're going to head down there now. This culvert makes our work easy. It's clear how the runoff from this end of the field gets into the stream. It runs off and goes through the stream through this culvert. This is our point of runoff. Although atrazine product labels are clear on application setback distances, they don't say specifically from what points the measurements should be made. For ease of interpretation, the Minnesota Department of Agriculture has determined that for lakes and streams, the measurements should be made from the water's edge at the time of application. Culverts are a special case. Since what goes in one end comes directly out the other, the Minnesota Department of Agriculture has determined that the point of measure for the setback should be from the inlet of the pipe. We're going to use the 66 foot rope to measure the setback area from this point of runoff and stake it out in the fields with flags. So here is the required 66 foot application setback area from the point of runoff into the stream. You can see it's circular in shape because we measured from one distinct point of runoff. This semicircular shape is also how atrazine application setbacks from streams are indicated on the atrazine application setback poster. Note that the application setbacks from lakes and reservoirs are measured differently. They are not measured from a given point of runoff but evenly back from the entire shoreline. Within the marked area, no atrazine applications can be made. Crops can be grown, but weed control needs to be accomplished with some other method than using atrazine. Do we expect pesticide applicators to measure out 66 foot setback areas like we just demonstrated? Probably not. This is something that could be estimated by counting rows or counting fence posts. Planting all or a portion of the area to a permanent grass filter strip would further improve water quality by trapping sediment and reducing nutrient and pesticide runoff. 30 feet is the minimum filter strip with the Minnesota Department of Agriculture recommends. It is a recommendation, however, not a requirement of the atrazine label. The Minnesota Department of Agriculture has done field inspections on atrazine use, specifically on application setbacks from water. In 2010, only one violation of the atrazine application setback requirement was found. That's good news, but the best news would be having 100% compliance with the label every year. For copies of our poster and further information on atrazine use, please visit our website. We hope this video has been helpful. For Ron Struss and Ray Picotti, thanks for watching.